Hey, WayFam, thank you for joining us for our sermon. We believe that God's word will make an impact on your life. Let's tune in. Uh, tonight, well, we're going to be again talking on the three keys of success. And uh, I want to kind of just uh, uh, kind of recap uh, Pastor's first message uh, that he did a couple of weeks ago. And anybody remember what, what it was? The number one key, the first key was to do what? To commit to success. You got to be committed to success. That word uh, succeed is to accomplish what is attempted or intended, to thrive to prosper. Anybody want to prosper? Uh, it, it's to grow. The word commit is to pledge oneself to send into battle. In order to, to experience success in your life, you got you to gotta be able to battle. You got you to have a battle mentality, a battle mindset. Amen. I believe uh, last week, uh, Pastor uh, Robert talked about key number two. Key number two was what? You got to have a positive self-talk. Come on, you got to be able to encourage yourself. You might, you know, you may not get that encouragement or that positive push from someone else, but you got to learn how to self-talk. You got to motivate. Sometimes you got to motivate yourself. Amen. And so you need to have a self-talk. You got to have a, I will not quit attitude. I don't care what happens in your life. I don't care if you get knocked down, you can get up. You got to have a no quit attitude. I remember me and my wife went through a challenge in our marriage in our early years and uh, it, it got real ugly <laughs> and it could have went in, 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 in a real bad. But you know what? I had a, I had an attitude that I am not going to quit. Uh, and, and, you know, and it was my fault. <laughs> I, I was the problem. <laughs> What no hurt, no doing on hers. Uh, but but I had to have a I will not quit attitude, self talk. And uh, today uh, we want to talk to you about the third key or the number three key to living a successful life, and that is self discipline. Tell your tell your neighbor you you need to get disciplined. Come on, you need to have some discipline. Oh, come on, tell them one more time. And, I, I, and without, without self-discipline, there will be no success. Without self-discipline, there will be no success. Uh, I'm going to give you a few quotes here. It says, without self-discipline, success is impossible. Lou Holtz. Another quote, with self-discipline, most anything is possible. Theodore Roosevelt. Another quote, if you want to be a, if you want to be great, I have to win the victory over myself. Come on, if you want to be great, come on, somebody say, I got to win the victory over myself. Most of our defeat comes from, or not being successful comes from ourselves. This is Harry S. Truman. One more quote I want to point out to you. Discipline is the bridge between goals and the accomplishment. Discipline is the goal or the bridge between what? Goals and accomplishments. You may have some goals that you, you've set out for, but if you're not disciplined, it's not going to happen. If there are accomplishments that you want to reach in your life, they're going to come through self-discipline. I'm going to give you three facts about discipline, three facts that are, I believe that will be able to help you to understand the importance of discipline in your life to be able to live a successful life. Amen? Anybody want to live a successful life? I believe we all said we do. Fact number one, self-discipline, self-discipline is a success, or I should say lack of self-discipline is a success disqualifier. Without self-discipline, you disqualify yourself from your own success. Over in 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27 in the NLT translation, it says, so I run with purpose in every step. 
I am not just shadow boxing. I am not just going through the motions. I, I, I'm not just swinging in thin air and hoping something happens. I remember being in high school and uh, there, there, you know, occasionally there were fights would take place. And when you heard a fight was going on, come on, anybody, you heard a fight was going on, everybody broke to the area where the fight was. <laughs> and, and, and there would be two guys standing there and they're, they're both in the fight position, but nobody's throwing any blows. <laughs> And then when they do start throwing blows, they're making no contact. <laughs> uh, nobody's hitting anyone. They are literally shadow boxing. They are swinging in, in the thin air. <laughs> and with that mindset, there will be no successor. There will be nobody to win the battle because they're shadow boxing. <laughs> and when people are shadow boxing, everybody else seems to tend to, oh, they don't want to fight. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's, they're, they're, both afraid, they're both afraid of losing, so neither one of them is going to throw any blows. I remember back in the day, and it's like, okay, if you cross that line, we're going to get them up, but nobody wants to cross the line. Shadow boxing. Many of us are going through life like that, and we won't experience success in that fashion. Paul went on to say this in 1 Corinthians. Paul said, I discipline my body like an athlete. Paul, one of the, the, one of the greatest apostles of the Bible, he says, I, I have to discipline my life or my body like an athlete. He's comparing his discipline to the life of an athlete. He, 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 there was something about an athlete that he saw that took discipline to accomplish whatever it was that they accomplished in life. Paul used the illustration of an athlete to talk about discipline. Any athletes in the house? You know what it takes to be a, a solid athlete. It takes sincere discipline and dedication to be the best that you can be. Even Paul said, I, I'm just... I'm looking at these athletes. Matter of fact, these athletes, especially in his time, would literally fight unto death. <laughs> I mean, we were, we were in the uh, uh, Belize. We went to see some of the, 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 uh, the Mayan ruins, and there were, they had little sporting events that they were showing us. And they said the people that were selected to actually fight as athletes would literally have to fight. The loser would literally be persecuted or they would, they would literally be tortured or, or, or they're killed if they lost the match. I was like, I wouldn't want to be no athlete back in them days. <laughs> I, I, I'll stick to, to, to building the, 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 the temples. <laughs> athlete, no, I'm not an athlete. I have no coordination. I got two left feet. <laughs> But, but an athlete would literally have to sacrifice his body. Paul said this, training it to do what it what? Should. Otherwise, he feared that his own preaching might, itself might be disqualified. I believe that we can look at the life of athletes and, 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 and really measure what it takes. I, I want to point out an athlete, a very well-known athlete to all of us that, that we might be able to get some uh, encouragement from when it comes to discipline to discipline in his body to be one of the greatest uh, that is said to be possibly of all time. And that's LeBron James. Can we get a picture of that guy up there? Come on, somebody. <laughs> now, some of you, I'm not going to take it for granted that everybody know who he is. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't make that mistake no more. It's like you say, everybody know. No, not everybody know LeBron James. Some people just don't know. <laughs> Just in case you don't know, LeBron James at this age is 35 years old, and he, he plays 17 years at this point uh, in the National Basketball Association, which is the NBA. Yeah, keep him up there, man. Come on, man. You got to win it for us this year. Come on. Come on, LeBron. Now, LeBron is often regarded as the greatest basketball player of all times. What makes, what makes him qualify in that conversation? Well, LeBron James is, is, is a three-time NBA champion. He's a four-time NBA Most Valuable Player. He's a three-time NBA Finals MVP. He's a two-time Olympic gold medalist. He's a 15 straight NBA All-Star Games. He's a three-time All-Star MVP. He's a 2008 NBA scoring title that he won. 
He's all-time NBA playoff scoring leader. He's a fourth-time all-scoring leader in the National Basketball Association. He's an all-NBA first team 12 times. He's all-defensive player first team five times. He has gone to eight straight NBA finals, which has been done by no other player in the NBA up until the last season where he did not even make the playoffs. And the question for LeBron James was, what are you going to do now? <laughs> and and, and the, the conversation over the summer has been going around, well, LeBron ain't interested in basketball no more. LeBron is, 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 is making a movie now, a Space Jam. He's all about Hollywood and this and that. And LeBron never came out and said a word. And then, of course, now they're getting ready for a season. They had a conversation with LeBron, and uh, they asked LeBron, so what have you been doing in the offseason? This was the longest offseason you've ever had. What have you been able to do with yourself? LeBron basically said, I have been self-disciplined. LeBron said, in my season off, I've watched every game of the playoffs, studying every opponent. He says, I watched every game. He says, second, I trained every single day. The first two months I did light training just to stay in shape. And he said, but then while I began to film Space Jam, I had to discipline my body and I had to, to discipline myself to get up at four o'clock every morning to get my two hour training in before I go and film Space Jam. And then I had to come home, get something to eat and train again. And then he said, and he said, there's a thing that my mom always told me. She says, she says, in a quote from LeBron James, don't talk about it, be about it. When we can all sit around and talk about what we want to do, but we got to stop talking about it and we got to start what? Being about it. Come on, Paul, Paul, Paul related his life of ministry to an athlete who he understood took more than the norm to be able to be the greatest of all time. And because of that, LeBron said this, and not only that, he spends a million dollars a year on his body. Now he makes 30 million a year. Hey, hey, that's a dollar to him. So don't get all messed up, don't get all messed you know. But he says this, this is what LeBron says. His final comments was, he said, he says, because of that, he says, I will, I will be successful. Come on, we're not going to be successful by what we say. We're going to be successful by what we do. And if we do it, then it's going to bring success. Take a look at this. Right here, there's a quote that says what? Success doesn't just happen. You have to be intentional about it. And, and that takes discipline. John C. Maxwell. In Proverbs 1.3, it says, their, their purpose is to teach people to live what? Disciplined lives and successful lives. To what? Help them do what is right, just, and fair. It takes discipline. The successful person has the habit of doing the things uh, uh, the, the, the failures don't like to do. Do you know that successful people have a habit of doing the things that failures don't even like to do? They don't like doing them either necessarily, but their disliking is subordinated to what? The strength of their purpose. E.M. Gary. Let's look at fact number two. Fact number two is what? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm already on what? Where'd I go? I went to two, right? Okay, so number two, I've already started number two. Where's, where's uh, 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 where is uh, uh, Brother Dave? I'm on number two already. <laughs> Fact number two <laughs> that I went into is discipline and success always what? Go together. You got that? Self-discipline, no, that's number three. <laughs> Fact number one, lack of self-discipline is a successful what? Disqualifier. Fact number two, discipline and success always go together. Without it, we cannot succeed. Look at this. 
can't have one without the other. We can't succeed without self-discipline, and we can't be self-disciplined without succeeding. If you are self-disciplined, what, what it said is if you're self-disciplined, you will succeed. It just, it, come on, it just has to happen. And you, if you're wondering, well, how's it going to happen? How am I going to make things happen in my life? How am I going to turn things around? If you're self-disciplined, you will turn things. Things will turn around. Your life will change. Things will work out good. Things will, you will overcome. If you practice self-discipline, you will be successful. It, it just has to happen. I want to go to number three. Number three, self-discipline and self-control is a what? Fruit of the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, this is this. You see, because, you know, we have this, well, I, I just, it just can't happen. I, I, don't, I, I don't know how, but I've, I've tried before, but, but here's the thing. See, you have the Spirit of God now. So every believer has the ability to do what they couldn't do, do. Come on. Every believer has the ability to do what they couldn't do through the power of the Holy Spirit in life. But now that you're in Christ, you have the power of the Holy Spirit to do what you weren't able to do outside of the Holy Spirit being in you. Come on, what you couldn't do in the past, what you couldn't do in your former life, you now have the ability to do because of the Spirit of God that is within you. Come on, somebody didn't get that. What you couldn't do before you were empowered with the Holy Spirit, now you can do because of the power of the Holy Spirit that is within you. I, I need you to get this. Because as a believer, you, you're, you're, you're indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Look at Galatians 5, through 24. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and what? Self. Self-control. And so, let's talk about this, self-control. Because if you don't have no self-control, you won't have no success. And the problem with a lot of believers is we out of control. <laughs> and we make excuses for it. Well, that's just the way I am. Well, my daddy was out of control, so now I'm out of control. And my mama was this, and now that make me this. No. <laughs> We got to start with all that because they were without the spirit. You have the spirit. You, now the Bible says you have self-control. You, you can get out of a situation. You can say no. You can say I'm done. I'm not going there. I'm not doing that. I know it's not easy, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit that's in you that is, it enables you to be able to say no to things that would disqualify you from reaching the goals and the successes of the life that you, that you foresee. And so here it is. You know, always gotta gotta come with something here, so I gotta give a, I gotta give y'all a couple. Now, I'm a, I'm a my wife is a, a safety engineer, and uh, she decided that she wanted to further her opportunity to uh, to accomplish some things that maybe 15, 10 to 15 percent of all engineers have, and so she wanted a CSP, which is another certification that not only puts her in that status but it also brought my money into the house. <laughs> I, I was like, hallelujah. I, I'm with you, go on and get that cert. <laughs> what you gotta do? <laughs> but, but it took some self-discipline. And so now she did this while raising three kids. Come on, little ones. Still, still bringing home the bacon, putting it in the pan. She was bringing it home and frying it. <laughs> But, but she was like, but I got to get this cert. 
Uh, and so, so she said, well, I said, well, how are you going to do it? You don't have time. She said, well, I got I to gotta, I gotta exercise some discipline. And so I said, what you going to do? She said, well, I can't abandon my responsibility as a mother and, and, and a worker uh, and with my job. So then what did she do? This is what she did. She got the kids all squared away. I helped as much as I could. Amen. Give me a little props. I was there. <laughs> I didn't abandon her. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I couldn't help her study. She was way past me. I was like, one thing, I can help you with the bacon. I can help you with the, with the, with the bread, but I can't help you with the study. Uh, but, but what she would do was take care of the kids, get them all settled, cook dinner. But then she would get these little index cards. And she was studying uh, 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 electronics, engine. Yeah, I mean, it was like five or six different subjects. She, and I can help her with the electrical stuff. So she would come in with, what is a white wire and what does that do to the circuit and this and that? I can help her with that because I was an electrician. Uh, but, but other than that, I told her, I can't answer no more of your questions. <laughs> But, but, she would, but she would literally at about 11 or 12 o'clock at night get in the closet, yes. wow. turn the light on, and close the door, and she'd have a stack of index cards. And every night she would go through the index cards preparing for this test. Night after night after night. And then that test date came up. And she went in there, and she knocked that test out. Yeah. Why? Because self-discipline brings success. And I mean, it was hard. And I was like, I don't know how you're doing it. I, I didn't talk her out of it, but I was just like, I, is there anything I can do? I knock, sometime I'm in the bed and I go knock on the, uh, are you okay in there? I can hear her snoring. You know? <laughs> and then she wake up and she's going through her index cards. She's driving in the car. She got her index cards. She's got them posted on the refrigerator. They're, they're, they're next to me in the bed. I, I was married to index cards for a few months. <laughs> that was our relationship. But I knew she was, she was being self-disciplined to accomplish a goal to, 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 to get to another level that everybody ain't at. Most people are scared to go into. And boy, when she got that certification, I said, what you gonna do now? She skipped on down to the job and she slapped that thing on the table. And she's like, what y'all gonna do? <laughs> they looked at that thing. She said, now, if y'all don't do nothing, there's some other couple, other folk will. Because they're looking, they looking for the 10 to 15% of people that have this certification. And then she came home and said, they, they came through. They hooked me up. They, they get raised. And, and I was shouting, hallelujah. It was, it was worth the sacrifice. Amen. Because I had to practice some self-discipline, too. Because things were changing around the house. I, I had to lean on Jesus. I needed the Holy Spirit. Help me. Uh, another night, another night, another night. <laughs> Somebody got that. <laughs> Somebody like, what are you talking about? <laughs> All three kids was here. <laughs> we never got a fourth one. <laughs> that wasn't the reason why. It was because I just wasn't there like I should have been for the third one. She was like, I ain't giving you no more kids. You made me do this last one by myself. <laughs> it ain't happening again. <laughs> no, three was enough, really. <laughs> I had my boy, my girl, then my other boy. I was good. But, but self-discipline. Now, uh, I remember being in the trade as an electrician. I was 18, 19 years old, 20 maybe. I would be in a jack pit. I'd be boring pipe. I'd be working foot of water to my knees. And I had a supervisor who didn't want to see me make it. So his goal was to try to get me to say something or do something I shouldn't do to get me out the trade. So while I'm in that hole, I'm working. He's standing over me, spitting sunflower seeds, <laughs> dropping them on me because he wanted me to react. But I was self-disciplined because I'm like, I'm trying, to be a, I'm trying to be a journeyman electrician one day. I'm trying to get to where I'm making 20, 30 bucks an hour. You ain't, I know I'm making nine right now, but this ain't where I'm planning to be. But I know it was only gonna come with self-discipline. And so I had, to, I had to take the sunflower seeds, I had, to, I, had to, I had to bite my tongue and just keep pushing that pipe underground. 
keep digging them holes because I had some goals. I had some, some things I was trying to accomplish, some things, some places I was trying to go. So I had to practice self-discipline and I wasn't gonna let nobody stop me from accomplishing my goal. So my self-discipline led to me meeting my goals and my successes. And five or six years later, I became a full-time journeyman electrician. In the trade, that's on my trades, man. <laughs> Union, local 11, IBEW. <laughs> Little shout out to the IBE. <laughs> I got a retirement pension coming, praise the Lord. Because I was disciplined. That's right. Come on, you got to get disciplined. It's not going to happen unless you exercise some discipline. Come on, y'all, you got to hear, I'm going to give y'all one more story. <laughs> this is, we're talking about self-control, right? All of this talk is creating self-control, Amen. Self-control. I had to have self-control in that pit. She had to have self-control. I want to go to sleep, but no, I'm not going to sleep. No, I, I'm, I'm going to keep going. And so I was, uh, I was just a lad. <laughs> this was before I met my wife, Kathy. Uh, and I was around 19, 18, 19. And so was, there was this cute little girl. And uh, she invited me over to her house one evening. True story. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I had a little friend already, but she didn't care. She invited me anyway. And uh, I had this 67 Cougar. I had to go kick it into shape to get there. <laughs> and uh, it fired up. And I drove about 10 miles to her house. Uh, she told me she was there babysitting all by herself. The kids were already asleep. The mama and they ain't gonna be back for a while. But I had goals. I didn't want no children out of wedlock. I didn't want no kids. I didn't want all that. So those were my goals. But I said in order for me to accomplish my goals, I gotta, I gotta have some self-discipline. But the, but the enemy was after me. Because he didn't want that for me. And so what happened was, uh, I, I, in my flesh, I let my flesh get the best of me. And I jumped in my car and I had just enough gas because I was a young buck, all my pennies counted. But I drove over there. I, I was like, my flesh was, was talking. I was like, just get, get me over there. And I showed up, and I remember walking, I walked in the house, and I was like, what's going on in here? It's looking kind of, and I should have knew better when I walked in and there was a mattress on the floor in the front room, and that's all it was. There was no other furnishings in the house. <laughs> that was my first sign. <laughs> but I ignored the sign. And I walked on in, and I sat in, the, in there on the, on the sofa with her, and I was like, where are the kids? And they like, oh, they already sleep. Where are the parents? Oh, they won't be back for a while. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian at the time, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, this is, I, I, I kind of see where this is going, but let me see how, how far this can go. <laughs> And, uh, and so uh, I'm sitting there, right, and I told her, and now I'm trying to like, I see where this is headed, and I'm like, well, and then she put on some soft music. She had, she had everything planned out. The music was soft, everything was, was, was good. And, and then uh, she kind of, I sat down, but I kind of set it over here. She was sitting, and then I sat over here, but then she eased over. And then, and then I moved over some more, now I'm in the corner. Cause I'm like, I don't need to be here, but I'm like, but I'm here. <laughs> Maybe I do need to be here. <laughs> that was the battle going on in my mind. It was a spiritual warfare happening. And then so she put her arm around me. And I was like, oh boy. She's getting a kind of aggressive. And I was like, uh, I, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> and she was like, I don't care. If I can just have one evening with you, I'm good. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, what? I ain't never seen this kind of aggression. I, I, I didn't know whether to, to be happy or well, I was like <laughs> and, uh, uh And then all of a sudden, she started getting aggressive. And I was like, oh, no, the Holy Spirit just like, and then everything started, my, my, my mind started going. I started talking about them babies. I started seeing them babies running around with some woman I don't know. I, you know, I, I'm trying to have a happy life with my wife and kids, and I got a little baby running in my house talking about that. I was like, ah. I started seeing all the stuff that I didn't want to see. <laughs> And I'm like, I got to do something. So then I said, well, I, I told her, I said, I'm sorry, I got to go. And then she got like, got an attitude. She got mad. She's like, oh, you ain't going nowhere. I, like, I, and I knew, I was like, oh, yes, I am. 
And then I'm, I literally, I, I, I start heading towards the door. I got to the door. I got my hand on the door. I don't know, something, she snatched me. And then, and next thing you know, I'm on, I'm on my back hole. I don't know what, she, I don't know if she flipped me, tossed me. I don't know how she did it. All I know, I was back, I was back, all back. I, all back was on the mattress. <laughs> and she looking over me like it's on. I'm like, no, it ain't. <laughs> So she went to jump. While she jumped, I rolled, I tucked. <laughs> I got to the door. I got my hand on the door. And I, had, I was out there like she had my coat. I, I literally, I think I left, I literally did a Joseph. I left my coat. I came out my coat. I'm like, you can have the coat. You can have my belt. You can have my, my, you can have my other shoe. I ran to my car. I jumped in my car. <laughs> Holy Spirit got me out of there. I got home. I was on my knees, Lord. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, Lord. I'll never help me. <laughs> Come on. I don't care how far you have gone. I don't care how close. There you always can get up and get out. I don't care if you, it's too late. I can't go. I'm already stuck. No, you got to get up. If you're going to meet the goals, if you're going to make your accomplishments, you got to get up. I don't care if it seems too late. It's not too late. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can get up and get out so you can accomplish the goals that God has for you. It's not just going to happen. It's only going to come through self-discipline and through the powerful work of the Holy Spirit. Come on, you can do it. Self-discipline is attainable. Self-control is attainable. Why? Because we have the work of the Holy Spirit in us to help us accomplish and do what we can't do in ourselves. Let's give God some praise as we stand to our feet. Come on, come on, come on, give God some praise. You better clap like you, like you gonna accomplish your goals. You better clap like you gonna be a successor. There is nothing gonna stop you now. Before you walked in, you didn't see it, but now you see it because the word of God says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that this message was a blessing to you and it really touched your life. Remember, we love you. We are here for you. Contact us anytime. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Share with your friends and relatives. I am sure they would be blessed just like you were. See you next time. Remember this, if God is for you, there's no one that could come.